Welcome to the shop. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the Inqualla. I'll show you how to use it and go over some safety and maintenance tips. So, let's get going. The Inqualla is a positioning and spinning machine used in glasswork. You can move the head around in a wide variety of different positions and then lock it in place using electromagnets. It has three axes of movement. The horizontal axis, the vertical axis, and the twist axis. The magnets are pretty strong and they can hold a fairly heavy workpiece. I've seen guys work with large solid objects six inches in diameter, six inches long on a steel punty with a big moil. The magnets aren't perfect, and if you try really hard, you can overpower them, but for most normal glass work, the magnets are strong enough. Here's the controls on the Inqualla. Let me move the heat shield out of the way here so that you can see what the buttons are. There's a back button, a front button, a lever, and a thumb wheel. The lever releases the magnet. When you grab the handle and press the lever, the magnet is released. When you release the lever, the magnet is energized. The glass piece is held in place by a clamping mechanism. The clamping mechanism slides easily up and down on its bar and at the top is held in place by a little magnet. This can be very convenient for quickly removing and reinserting your glass piece. To clamp it in place, simply move the lever down. The lever moves almost effortlessly. It's got a precision cam mechanism inside that grips the glass very securely. Of course, glass is glass, and you don't want a metal-to-metal -metal grip gripping very securely because it could put potentially crack the glass. The Inqualla has little rubber bumpers right up here on the clamp, as well as the drive rollers are high-temperature silicone O-rings and both of these together provide a little bit of resiliency. So even though the cam is a very, very strong lock, you've got a little bit of give here, so you're not clamping your piece of glass between two pieces of metal. The Inqualla is designed for very quick and easy placement of a glass piece. So you can take it out, do some handwork, put it back in, and return to operation with the Inqualla. The Inqualla has two operating modes. Operating modes are selected by the little toggle switch on the controller box. When the switch is in the up position, the Inqualla is in rotation mode. When the switch is in the down position, the Inqualla is in positioning mode. Let's look at rotation mode and see how it works. In rotation mode, pushing the front button starts and stops rotation. Using the thumb wheel increases or decreases speed. It can go really, really, really slow or really, really fast. The foot pedal that you can't see in the video controls pause and reverse. You can pause for as long as you want or reverse as fast as you can push the pedal. When the Inqualla is stopped in rotation mode, it can either hold the piece in place or allow the piece to turn freely. In order to lock the piece in place, push the foot pedal while stopped in rotation mode. 
Now the stepper motors are energized in holding position and the piece is held fairly securely. Push the pedal again and you can grab the piece by hand and move it around. Positioning mode is selected by flipping the little toggle switch down. In positioning mode, the foot pedal starts when you press the pedal, stops when you release the pedal. The front button reverses. And the speed control controls the speed. The system remembers the configuration. It remembers the speed and direction that you were in for each mode. So if you return to rotation mode, you're back at the speed you were at before, back at the speed and direction. Go into positioning mode, position, go back to rotation mode, and you're rotating at the same speed. In position mode, when the glass is not moving, the stepper motors are always locked. You can't move the glass by hand in position mode. In the normal configuration, which is what the Inquala comes with from the factory, the magnets can be controlled in one of two ways. In the first situation, the lever releases all of the magnets and allows full rotation. When the back button is pressed, it locks the twist axis in place, and now the lever only controls horizontal and vertical motion. This can be very useful if you have a heavy piece, because when all magnets are enabled and you release the magnets with a heavy piece, it's going to want to go down, and you better be ready to take control. In many cases, you don't actually need twist control. In many cases, all you want to do is move the piece around in the flame or move it for better visibility, and you don't really want to have to take control of the twist axis, and so in this case, it's good to be able to lock the twist axis. The Inquala is equipped with a travel lock, so it doesn't flop around if you're going to transport it or when it's being shipped. I've included a little piece of foam to protect the base against scraping by the motor. It's not strictly necessary, but you might want to hold on to it. In order to lock the Inquala to the base, hold the handle, keep it under control, and remove the power. Notice that when the power is removed, the electromagnets aren't holding anymore, and you don't want to let it just fall down. Carefully move the head into position. Put the little piece of foam under the back end of the motors. Take the spacer and the screw. Screw goes through the spacer into a threaded hole in the base. And this locks the system together fairly, fairly securely. You can, put, you can carry it around, you can put it in a car. It's even shipped this way. The travel lock is not perfect. The machine can still move around a little bit, but it's not going to damage itself by flopping around uncontrollably. When you first receive the Inquala, it's important to keep it under control. Remove the travel lock, carefully move the head out of its stowage position, and hold on to it. The ball bearings in the horizontal axis are very, very good bearings. And let's see if I can make demonstrate this. Well, the table is probably uh, too level. If your table surface is not perfectly level, the ball bearings are so good that the head is going to want to rotate whatever direction the table wants it to move. So before you apply power, make sure you keep the Inquala under control. Apply power, now the electromagnets lock. Press the back button to enable all axis motion. 
and get the Inquala into position ready for use. The Inquala doesn't have a power switch. There's several ways that you can deal with this. You could leave it on all, t all the time. Some people actually do that. You could connect it to a power strip, turn the power strip off. You could pull out the power connector, but that's not really recommended because pulling out and reinserting this connector over and over again many hundreds of times it can possibly cause the connector to become unreliable. There is a feature built into the software called shutdown mode. Press the front button and hold it. After a few seconds, power will be removed from the magnets and the stepper motors. The controller still stays alive and still has enough power to be able to detect when you've pressed the lever, and that brings it back into full operation. Let's talk a little bit about safety. The Inquala is a fairly safe machine, but there's a few things that you need to watch out for. First and most important is electromagnets require electricity. If power is lost, axes will move. Electromagnets will release. If you have a heavy piece, your heavy piece will fall. A good way to deal with this problem is by using an uninterruptible power supply. This is a commonly available product that's commonly used for keeping computers alive during power failures. This little guy is an APC, costs about 50 bucks, has definitely has enough power to keep an Inquala alive and gives you that little extra bit of security knowing that a power failure is not going to cause the machine to collapse. Another thing that's important to keep in mind is that in rotation mode, the Inquala is capable of spinning the glass really, really fast. This can be really useful if you have the skill to use centrifugal force and keep the glass under control when doing something like spinning out a goblet foot or spinning a bubble against a paddle to create a nice smooth cylinder can be very useful if you have the skill to control it. If you don't have the skill to control it, high-speed rotation can cause the glass to fly around in places you don't want. So please, if you use high-speed rotation, just be careful. Also, the software has a built-in safety feature where if you've selected high-speed rotation and then stopped the Inquala, when you restart, it'll restart back at a safer, slower speed. This is an intentional. This is done by design, and it's done in order to prevent surprises. You don't want to forget that you had it running at high speed and then go and push the button and be surprised by the thing starting up at a high speed. You want to always have high speed under your control so if you want it, you can select it. The machine never automatically selects it on its own. The Inquala comes standard, mounted to a heavy steel base. This base provides stability and balance for most, but not all, conditions. If you extend the arm into an extreme position, the heavy base is not heavy enough to maintain stability, and the Inquala will fall over. In most normal situations with normal workpieces and normal range of motion, the steel base is fine and provides adequate balance. If you require operating in the extreme positions at extreme extension or with extremely heavy pieces, you're going to have to secure it to your bench. There's a hole in the center that you can put a screw in. You can always put a clamp on it. Or 
you can just not use the steel base at all and screw the uh, main axle here through your bench using a 5 16 bolt. This is what I do on my bench, and I've made a couple of uh, custom attachments for other glass workers who have attached it to their workstation in this way. Just be aware of balance and be careful because the steel base does not provide stability under all conditions. Another thing to watch out for, and this is for safety of the machine, not necessarily for your personal safety, that when the clamp is in the full down position, when there's no glass in the, in the clamp, you notice that the lever becomes really hard to move because it's kind of like binding up. Don't force it. The lever should feel completely smooth and almost effortless. If you try to force it when it's hard down on the bottom, you'll break the clamp. Probably not a good idea to break the clamp. The lever should always feel smooth and nearly effortless. The Anquala has an aluminum heat shield to keep the radiant heat away from your hand and to keep the radiant heat away from the electronics in the hand control front end. The thumb wheel is connected to a precision optical encoder that has some circuitry in it. And it is, since it's an electronic device, if it gets excessively hot, it could fail. Also, you don't want your hand getting excessively hot. So the heat shield is a very effective protection that protects the electronics and your hand against radiant heat. Like I said before, I've seen guys work on a large solid piece, red hot, with two delta mags in crossfire, enormous amount of radiant heat, and the heat shield protects both the electronics and the operator's hand. The Anquala is an electrically operated machine, and like all electrically operated machines, it relies on wires. The wires are specially selected to be resistant to high heat. The insulation is rated at 200 degrees C, which is, I don't know, what, 400 and something degrees Fahrenheit, and the wires are enclosed in a flexible steel conduit, making the wiring very, very resistant to radiant heat. Now, of course, a glass working torch is very, very hot. And if you manage to point a torch at the conduit and just let it cook there for many, many seconds, you'll kill the wiring, you'll burn the conduit. If you slightly brush against a flame while you're moving around, maybe with a hand torch, maybe moving a bench torch, and you just barely brush against it, no problem. And, like I said, even big pieces, radiant heat won't damage the wiring. So, you know, be careful, but you don't have to be that horribly careful. The most obvious use of the Inquala is as a single-sided lathe. Unlike a traditional glass lathe, the Inquala has freedom to move the axis around. You can move a part to take advantage of gravity. You can move it down to press a maria against a graphite. You can hold it in place, use paddles, use tools, use forming tools, vary the speed, and, unlike a traditional glass lathe, very quickly remove the piece for handwork, put the piece back in, and very quickly switch back and forth between Inquala and handwork. Unlike a traditional glass lathe, where the piece is held securely in a chuck, the Inquala is a roller machine. 
The rollers are made on a CNC machine to very high levels of accuracy. The silicone O-rings are made in an injection mold and are also very accurate, but neither one of them is perfect, and the glass certainly isn't perfect. As a result of this, when the glass is rotating, it's going to drift a little side to side. The drift depends on a whole lot of factors. Operating slowly for a short time, there's not much drift. As you increase speed, you increase drift. If you move the axis where gravity starts getting involved, you increase the drift. If you apply pressure with a paddle or another tool, you increase drift. There's a variety of different ways to manage drift. One of them is, don't worry about it. If you're operating slowly, if you're operating for a short time, if you're frequently removing the piece from the Inquala to go and do some handwork and then putting it back in and repeating over and over again, you don't have to worry about drift. But if you do care about drift, there's several strategies available for managing it. One of them is to put a mark on the glass. And as you see it drifting, beyond what you think is acceptable, simply reverse the direction of rotation. This also reverses the drift. If you absolutely require positive control of drift, the Inquala is designed to use lock collars. A lock collar fits on the glass piece and is tightened and then fits into the space between the first two guide rollers. With a lock collar in place, you can run all day and it's not going to drift. This is especially handy for a very long assembly operation where you may keep the piece in the Inquala for hours. I provide custom-made Delrin plastic lock collars. You might ask, why use plastic on a glassworking machine? Plastic burns, plastic melts, it'll even catch on fire. Why use plastic? Well, you don't have to use plastic. You can use metal, you can use aluminum, you can use steel. Steel and aluminum lock collars, commonly called shaft collars, are easily available at any industrial supply or local hardware store. I use the Delrin because it slides cleanly against the aluminum uh, drive rollers and doesn't scratch them up. And also, I've found that in most of my applications, in most of my uses, the Delrin doesn't get hot, the Delrin doesn't melt. But you do have to be careful if you stick your piece in the kiln with a plastic lock collar on it. Another way to handle drift is to do it in glass. Push a Maria into your piece at the position where the lock collar would be, and then locate that between the rollers. Yes, drift can be a problem under certain conditions, but many users of the Inquala don't even don't bother with lock collars. They don't care about drift. Drift isn't a problem for them. In most of the work that I do, I don't even notice it. I almost never use lock colors, but if drift is a problem, there is a solution. Positioning mode is commonly used for assembly. You have a piece that you're working on held in place in the machine. Move it into a position that's comfortable. Maybe you're going to be using a hand torch and welding on something or perfecting a weld. Maybe you want better visibility. Maybe you want to take advantage of gravity. Maybe some position works better for you than another position. The advantage of the Inquala is that your hand isn't getting tired holding up this piece that you're working on, and this allows you to take your time, perfect your weld, 
get your attachment on very, very precisely because your hand isn't getting tired. The machine's doing the work. One thing that I do, and I think is a very useful thing, is to use positioning mode for striping. I use a hand torch and a color rod, stripe, move, stripe, move, kind of like welding. Since I'm a welder, this feels really natural to me. As far as I'm concerned, the traditional method of striping with a bench torch seems kind of backward. It's, it's almost like a painter trying to paint a painting with the paintbrush clamped in a vise and moving the canvas around. So I find it very useful to do my striping on the Inquala with a hand torch. And in general, hand torches work exceptionally well with the Inquala for a wide variety of different, different operations. During a long assembly, sometimes the glass can get cold and cold glass is not our friend. One nice thing you can do on the Inquala is work on a piece in the positioning mode. When it starts getting cold, switch to rotation mode. Put the piece over a Bunsen. You don't have to put it in the kiln. You don't have to deal with kiln dust. You can let it reheat, take a break, do something else for a while when you're ready to get back to work, remove from the Bunsen, return to positioning mode, and get back to work. And one final note. Like a newly invented musical instrument, the virtuoso technique for the Inquala hasn't been invented yet. I have no doubt that as glass workers continue exploring it, they'll invent lots and lots of new and interesting techniques. I know I am. The Inquala requires very little maintenance, but it's always good to be aware of things and just inspect it and make sure that things are operating correctly. I strongly recommend a set of T-handle hex drivers makes it real easy to get into tight spots. I really dislike those hex drivers that are like a Swiss Army knife where the blades fold out. Almost impossible to get them into a tight spot to, to use them. All of the screws on the Inquala are secured with Loctite, so in normal use, you're probably not going to have screws getting loose. But it's always a good idea to be aware of things, to inspect the machine, to make sure that everything looks like it's staying together. If you see something getting loose, tighten it. Try to figure out why it got loose. But in general, the screws don't get loose. The bearings are permanently lubricated. The motors will basically run forever. And there's very little that actually has to be maintained about the machine. One thing that's important to keep in mind is watching the conduit, the flexible conduit, as it flexes around. A problem that's very common in the design of robotic systems is twisting wire, flexing wire. Wire likes to flex like this. It'll do that all day. It'll do that all year. Wire hates twisting. You can break a wire by twisting in a fairly short amount of time. That's why the cable routing, the conduit routing on the Inquala, was designed to avoid twisting. There is one little bit of twist here, but it's got a large radius, and so the twist is spread over a large area. But most of the motion is in bending motion. Be aware of how the conduit is supposed to flex, and if you see any signs of problems, if you see pinching, if you see the conduit going in a direction you didn't expect, if you see maybe the conduit breaks, or there's some problem with the conduit, 
contact me. We'll work it out. We'll fix it. But in general, the conduit routing is pretty darn good, and I haven't had field failures with uh, people having trouble with the conduit. When using the Inquala to press a Maria, you might want to adjust it to get it to be precisely perpendicular. I've provided adjustment screws at the stops on the head and at the base of the lower vertical arm. Using the square, you can adjust this to fairly precisely get it to be vertical when pushing a Maria. The standard operating configuration that I've been talking about in the beginning of the video is useful for just about everybody, for just about every application, and probably never needs to be changed. But along the way, people have asked me for special configurations that work a little bit differently. These configurations can be selected without having to change the software using a power on sequence where you remove power, press a button or a pedal, restore power, and the operating configuration is changed. The first configuration that I'm going to demonstrate is called the cycle configuration. To activate cycle, push the back button and apply power. The cycle configuration operates very similar to the standard configuration. You have full control over all axes, push the back button, this locks the twist axis, the lever now controls horizontal and vertical, and then in cycle configuration, we add one additional function. Press the button again, and now horizontal motion is totally free. You don't have to push the lever to get horizontal motion. If you push the lever, you get vertical motion. Some guys like this because it's fairly easy without having to grab the handle just the touch of a fingertip to move a piece of glass gently around in and out of the flame. Keep in mind that if your bench isn't perfectly level and you release the horizontal magnets, the ball bearings are so good, it'll go off on its own. The next special configuration was uh, made for a friend who wanted a, a completely different operating scheme. I'm not sure I like it, but I left it in just in case anybody wants to try it. In order to select this configuration, which is called pedal twist, hold down the foot pedal and apply power. Now, pressing the lever releases the horizontal and vertical axis, pressing the lever and the foot pedal at the same time releases twist. Since the foot pedal now controls twist, we had to figure out another way to do pause and reverse. In pedal twist, the front button starts and stops forward rotation, the back button starts and stops reverse rotation. The next configuration is even more bizarre. I'm not even sure why it's in there. I think maybe I thought it was going to be a good idea. This is power on with the, and I'm looking over at my notes because I can never remember which one is which. Power on with the pedal and the back button pressed. In this configuration, the lever controls the horizontal and vertical magnets, and the back button controls the twist axis. I think I came up with this at one time thinking it would be a good idea. I probably used it once or twice and decided, nope, don't like that. And if you want to try it out, go ahead and try it. You can always return to the standard configuration.
the final one of the special configurations, and you can probably guess what the secret handshake is, front button, pedal, power on. Now, the lever controls horizontal and vertical magnet release, but the back button releases all magnets, giving total control. Lever, horizontal, and vertical only. I came up with this one, too, when I was experimenting to see, you know, what kind of ways could you run this thing? And I really didn't like it either. I like the standard mode, which is probably why it's standard. Also keep in mind that when operating in any of the non-standard configurations, any of the uh, special configurations, the special configuration only applies to rotation mode. Position mode always operates the same and never changes its behavior if you've selected a custom configuration. To return to the standard configuration, press the front button while applying power, and now you're back to the configuration that the unit was shipped in. This is the configuration that's the most useful, and unless you have some really special requirements, you're probably not going to need to change it. So that pretty much covers the operation and the safety and maintenance of the Inquala. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy the Inquala. Hope you make great glass art with it. Thank you.